Yeah, so going on to the Southern Oregon preview and, and the game coming up this week in Ashland. Uh, Southern Oregon's won three in a row. Uh, what do you think that you've seen there doing a little bit better on film from the beginning of the season where they struggled? Uh, I think they've settled on their personnel a little bit. Yeah. Uh, they have some young but very talented players. Um, the quarterback is, is back in there and yeah. he's still getting hit a little bit, but he's a tough guy mm -hmm. and, and they're finding ways to win. Mm -hmm. And uh, Carroll was ahead of him 28 to 9 in the fourth quarter. So they don't give up, just right. like uh, the fans remember. They it's didn't us, give up yeah. out here, yeah. and uh, we were far enough ahead where it didn't matter. But I, I think they just believe. You yeah. know, they, they had a very tough couple losses to start the season uh, against Sac State, who's turned out to be a top top team in Division One AA. Lost a, a, a nail by Eastern. Eastern. Mm -hmm. And now they've now they've won some games. I th I think they just got their mojo back. They they believe that they're a championship team and playing against the Yotes, for them, couldn't come at a better time. So, yeah. so they are going to be ready. We've never won in Ashland. It's uh, not the easiest of trips, but uh, but that's life in the Frontier Conference. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're anxious, excited. They are, are a very difficult threat. They still throw the ball down the field. Uh, they have a couple of fantastic receivers. Yeah. Still uh, got game breakers, you know, they, they always do. do. They do. And they, they are doing a little bit more. Back to your question, they're, st they're doing a little bit more with the ball control pass game. And, okay. You know, they're willing to hold on to the ball. And mm -hmm. they aren't trying to score 50 points a game. Yep, yep. I mean, they're willing to hold on to the ball and help yep. their defense out a little bit and, and win 29-28 like yep. they did against Carroll. That's, that, that's their optimal game. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to talk to you about how, you know, we haven't won a game in action. We've gotten them a couple times here at Simplot Stadium, but... What's, what makes it tough to play in Raider Stadium and why, you know, I know we've played some close ones down there, yep. uh, but haven't been able to get one done. So. Well, usually it's their team. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So they're a very, very good team. And, and I told the team today they're the most recent team in the conference to win a national championship. The very next year they, they went to the, the title game. game. So they, they know how to win big games. That's just in their recent, recent heritage. And, and uh, so when I say that to, hey, we aren't playing some – Fly by night organization. These, these guys, these guys are are real, and and I, I love their coaching staff, and and uh, I'm very challenged by them, and and we got our work cut out for us mm -hmm. against these guys. Mm -hmm. They they uh, think they know us, and they do a pretty good job of defending what we do, especially our our tight end movement kind of stuff that gives people trouble. But they have a way that. Uh, of neutralizing them. Yeah, absolutely. And then, and then lastly, you know, what are the Yotes got to do to get a win this week in Ashland and keep this thing rolling? Well, again, and it's related to the, your previous question along with that, but we have to start fast. We, we need to get on the board quick and score for sure and um, not wait around. It was a little, fr everyone was a little frustrated when we didn't score right away this, this last week. And not that we've scored in the first quarter of every game but at least we know there's some things that we can do and do effectively. So we need to have some success. We need to get some chunk plays and 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 get to feeling good about ourselves offensively. Yep. Defensively, we need to stop the stop the big play, which mm -hmm. we were able to do the first time we played them. But that is not an easy task against Southern. So those are the two main things I say every week. We got to block and tackle and be the of toughest course. team. That's every week, no matter what. Uh, and we can't turn the ball over, and we got to get the ball in. Uh, the ball is everything. Mm -hmm. So so those things are, and for the fans, it's important to know those things are always talked about, always drilled, mm -hmm. always. And, and uh, so so we are really uh, drilling and harping on just fundamental, fundamental, fundamental. We need to be tough mentally and physically yes, sir. and even emotionally, which, yep. which back to last week's mm -hmm. game proved to be yep. the difference. And it's going to be big, you know, coming off of an emotional win being able to put that to bed and move on to the next week, right? You guys are, like you said, at 6-0 and right now. Every week is championship football. Yeah. Every week's a playoff game to be able to close this thing out. Yeah, and, so. and you know the, the ebb and flow of semesters, too. So the guys are coming off uh, fall break, yeah. and the semester just starts to heat up again. and <clears throat> It's tiring. You yeah. know, it's, it's a rigorous yeah. schedule these guys are on. Playing ball, studying, getting up early to, to lift, getting yeah. up early for class staying up late to get their classwork done. But it's what it's all about. Yeah. So they got to... Yeah. And Everyone was, in the country's got to do And they're resilient know? guys, too. I, you know, it's, and maybe more so than ever. I don't, I don't think losses stick with uh, the guys as long, and I'm not sure the wins do either, though I did warn the team there is something about 
maintaining the status quo yep. that is not a recipe for big time success. Mm -hmm. So we got to break through that, prepare even better this week. And I think that's the real key. We as coaches and the players just have to prepare at an even higher level. Absolutely. Well, tune in, guys, this, uh, this weekend in National Oregon. The game's going to be at 2 o'clock Mountain Time for all the local fans, uh, 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock Pacific. It's actually 2 o'clock Pacific. They moved it back. Okay. So, so it's 2 yeah, o'clock Pacific. 3 o'clock here time. 3 o'clock Mountain Time. Yes, sir. So uh, tune in this week as usual. Huge game for the Yotes to keep uh, atop of the Frontier Conference standings. Thank you for tuning in for week 8 of this deal show. And Coach Mo, appreciate your time. Thanks. Yep. All right, guys, so I want to preview a few players for Southern Oregon for the game coming up this week. Um, some of the similar guys we already previewed before, but want to talk about what they've done in the season since they played College of Idaho. Uh, first, starting with the defense, corner Michael Chisley Jr., guy's a ball hawk. He's got four interceptions on the year. The Yotes fans might remember that he had the pick six uh, in the first half against the C of I Yotes in week three. He's just a heck of a player, one-on-one -on -one cover guy, going to get in the face of the receivers, and he makes plays on the ball. So he's definitely a guy that we got to watch out for and is a big playmaker for them. And then on the front, uh, Trey Holmes, junior defensive tackle, number 66. He's just a problem. The guy's in the backfield every play. Um, he's got five and a half tackles for loss in the season, three and a half sacks. Um, he's a big key and anchor to their defense in the middle. Um, just a tough player for the Red Raiders. Causes a lot of problems for people's O-line in the run and pass game. So definitely a guy we got to watch out for on the offensive side. And then moving over to the Southern Oregon offense, quarterback Wyatt Hutchinson. Uh, he's been a little bit banged up this year. He missed about a game and a half. But um, he's a heck of a player. Dual threat guy. He can run and pass. He really uh, did it all against C of I the first matchup. Hurt us with his legs and with his arm. Um, he's got about 1,400 pass yards on the season, as well as I think it's 220 rush yards, 15 total touchdowns. So um, he does, like I said, he does it with his <clears throat> with his arm and his legs, uh, and just a really good player for them. And then their receivers. That's really probably the the strength of the Southern Oregon Red Raiders this year is their receiving core as a whole. Number one, uh, Christian Graney, uh, receiver, slot receiver, number 16. Uh, he's got 406 uh, yards on the season, 33 receptions for three touchdowns, a really productive player. I've seen him on film make a couple of really acrobatic catches, diving catches, jump balls. So he's just a great big play receiver for them. And then Jordan Sewell. Um, Yotes fans probably know about him, number two, uh, senior wide receiver. He's about 6'5", one of the biggest, fastest athletes in the Frontier Conference. Got five touchdowns on the year. Um, you know, he's had a couple big plays against C of I in week three. So, again, he's just a, a big play guy. And that's Southern Oregon football for you. They got a bunch of guys on their team, especially on the offense, that are capable of going the distance really on any play, right? They could run a little easy hitch route or out route to the sidelines. They can break a tackle, make a guy miss, and go for 70 yards. So they have some very dangerous athletes on the edges that are going to challenge the C of I defense. But, um, you know, obviously C of I's played great on defense this season. think we're up for the challenge, but certainly a few guys that we need to watch out for for the Southern Oregon Red Raiders.